Hi, it's Paul Maunder from Production Expert, and in this video I'll be doing a simple post-production mix using just the free version of Pro Tools, Pro Tools Intro. This version is limited in terms of its track count, but for basic mixes like the one I'll be working on shortly, it's absolutely fine. And actually, most of the other features from the paid versions of Pro Tools are here too. One thing you can't do in Pro Tools Intro is import video into the session, but there are still workarounds for this using software such as DoorBridge from Audio Design Desk, which allows you to sync Pro Tools to Final Cut Pro using MIDI timecode. In fact, there are other pieces of software which will let you do something similar. Russ wrote an article recently about a piece of software called QMIDI Pro, which allows you to sync video with Pro Tools Intro. For now though, since I'll be working on a very simple mix, I'll work with just the audio, because in this case, I'm just going to be balancing music with dialogue. So let's take a look. On the desktop, I've got a folder of exported audio. Now this has been exported from Adobe Premiere and we've got a track of dialogue and two tracks of music. This is basically a consolidated block of audio for each of those channels. Ideally, you'd move audio between applications using an AAF file, but Pro Tools Intro doesn't support that. So we're going with these consolidated blocks. Now there's multiple ways I could do this, but what I'm going to do is go into Pro Tools create a new session. So I can do that from the file menu or just use the keyboard shortcut command N. And then let's call this, I'll just call this basic post mix. I need to make sure my attributes are right. So it's WAV 24 bit, 48 kilohertz. And on the IO, I'm going to start out with the basic stereo mix settings. So let's click create. And I think I'll just put this on the desktop. So click on save and we'll be presented with a blank session. Now Pro Tools looks very empty when you first open it. This is the edit window. And if I press command and plus, I can move over to the mix window, which again is completely empty at the moment. I'm going to import this audio in a second, but let me just tell you about one really important setting before I do that. If we go into setup and preferences under the processing tab, if there's only one preference which you change, it should probably be this one, automatically copy files and import. I've enabled that. What that means is when I bring stuff into the session, even if it matches the session sample rate, it's going to copy it into the audio files folder for the session rather than referencing it from its original location. So let's drag these files in. I can drag them into an empty space in the edit window, or I could drag them into the tracks list. And I think I'll take that option. And now we have our audio on the timeline. Let's just have a quick listen to what we have. This is clearly dialogue. We know that increasing coaching occasions drives better. Yep, very low in level at the moment. This one is obviously music. And the other track's music as well. So this is going to be a very simple mix. However, we should probably name these tracks a little bit better. So I'm going to double click on the track header for this one. I'll call it Dialogue or DX. It's a bit of a strange abbreviation, but that's what's commonly used. And then I'm going to call this Music 1. And then I could either click Next or I could press Command and Right Arrow if I want to go to the next one type music too. Now let's make a master fader. It's always useful to have a master fader because you want to monitor the overall level. I like to use a lot of shortcuts, so I'll describe them as we go through this video. So shift command N is the shortcut for that. Now here's another thing. Command right arrow lets you choose between mono, stereo, well in this case just mono and stereo in Pro Tools intro. And then command down arrow lets you cycle through all the different track types or you could go back through them with up arrow. So stereo master fader. And if I press the tab key, I could give it a name if I wanted to. Master seems fine though. So just click on return or create. And there it is. For the purpose of this mix, I'd like to keep it to just free plugins, either those which are included with Pro Tools intro or third party ones, which are also free. And for loudness metering, I'll be using Yulian Loudness Meter 2. You can meter in a range of formats with this. You can see some of the features are reserved for the pro version, which is the paid one. But in the free version, there are presets for a number of different popular broadcast standards, including the American ATSC A85 standard and the European EBUR128 spec. I think for this, let's work to ATSC A85, which would be US TV broadcast. So let's start with the dialogue. This is clearly quite quiet. So I'm going to start by just clip gaining it up. If you don't see the clip gain line on the track, you can show it in one of two different ways. I'm a big advocate of shortcuts. So if you want to do the shortcut, it's control shift and minus at the top of the keyboard. So control shift minus. This thing here is called clip gain info. And to show or hide that, it's control shift and plus. But if you like doing everything from a menu, you can always go to the view menu clip and you can show the clip gain line or clip gain info. So I'm just going to turn it up. I'll just guess initially and turn it up a little bit. And then let's see where we're sitting. The thing that I'm really interested in in this loudness meter, I'll just resize it slightly, is the short term 
loudness. So for the purpose of keeping this mix really simple, I'm going to keep my dialogue to about minus 24 in the short term. And of course, the integrated has to be very close to minus 24 because that's the target integrated loudness. Here we go. We know that increasing coaching occasions drives better performance, but there's much more that we can do to understand. Okay, so that's a bit low. I'm just going to turn this up. I'm going to try and do this as quick as possible. One thing which is also worth mentioning is that when you press play in Pro Tools and then you stop it, we know that increasing coaching the cursor may or may not stop where you press stop. That depends on this button. I've just activated it, actually. This is called insertion follows playback. And if you want it to stop where you press stop, make sure that's on. Otherwise, turn it off. And what will happen is when you play you know, it the increasing... and stop it, the cursor returns to where it was originally, where it started. So I tend to keep it on. Now, the short term loudness in this kind of meter averages over three seconds. So if you don't play at least three seconds of content, you're not going to get a representative level out of it. So let's take a look at what it's doing now. You know, the increasing coaching occasions drives better performance but there's much more that we can do to understand what specifically it is about the coaching occasion that is that's close enough so i might just separate these a little bit i'm going to keep it as simple as possible i'll just select it press b and then this one looks louder you can although you shouldn't really mix just by looking at waveforms you can get some idea of approximate level and you can clip gain it to begin with just to get it somewhere close we put a lot of time in developing our people and uh yeah coaching is the the, the biggest instrument that we have now that's all right. I think on this track, I'm going to actually put um, a high pass filter. So if I activate a plugin on this track, by default, it would close this other plugin because the default behavior is that it closes the previous plugin. So in order to keep this open, I could detarget it. So switch this target off. Now that means that'll stay there. And if I find a plugin, make sure I stick to the free ones. As you can see, I've got all manner of plugins here. But let's use the stock one or one of them, which is this. This is just a one band EQ. And so high pass filter, I'll just enable it. Definitely don't want it to be one kilohertz because that's going to be extremely thin sounding. Time in develop but I want to use this just to filter out unwanted low frequencies. And uh, I think I'll put it at 90 hertz. So there's not going to be anything really usable in the dialogue below that, but it will take out any uh, unwanted rumbles which might be there. Okay, next piece of dialogue. The thing that the app does is you can stand with someone in a call, capture... It's a bit loud, just turn it down a little bit. ...the conversation that you're having there and then, agree the next focus there is for your next coaching day. And I'm not trying to get it to dead on minus 24.0, you know, I'm trying to get through this quickly. I'm just getting it into a ballpark because what we'll do after this is we'll apply some compression to get it even closer. So this is just getting them roughly right. You can think of clip gain as being a preparatory stage, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to get it fairly close. We're targeting about 4,000... 500 salespeople. So it's it's a huge um, project targeting, let's say, the, the whole commercial front line of Coca Cola. So he varies quite a bit in level. You can see at the start it's quite loud, and at the end it's really low. People sometimes do that tail off at the end. So I could spend time manually going through clip gaining it all over the place, but I don't want to you know waste too much time doing that. So I'm just going to turn up this last bit. So I'm going to click with the grabber tool, the grabber tool being this one, on the clip gain line. Click and make a second break point, drag it up. I'm just trying to stop him tailing off to the same extent that he does. Now let's see how that sounds. The whole commercial front line of Coca-Cola. He doesn't sound too sure about that, does he? But there it is. Now this next one, I'll turn it up a bit. This is just guesswork, but let's see what we've got. This tool will help you to grow and to develop as fast as possible and really release the full potential. So what I'm trying to do here all the time is look at the short term and we're targeting that approximate level of minus 24. This tool will help you to grow. Good enough, okay. Uh, you might want to just take out some of these bits, you know. I could use a feature called Strip Silence to do this, which is um, if you press Command U, I, I won't do it now, but this is an option where you can take out um, any audio which falls below a user-definable threshold. So it could be useful in this case just to take out the quiet sections. But I think I'll just manually take out a few bits here and there. It's intuitive. It's easy to use. It's straightforward. It's that might be something which I want to just drop down in level. So I could select it. And with the trim tool, in fact, the smart tool, if you've got these tools at the top of the edit window and you click above it, it will enable a multifunction tool called the smart tool. And if you hover in the top part just above the selection, then it becomes the trim tool and you can actually turn things like clip gain down or also volume automation or any automatable attribute. Let's see how that sounds. It's straightforward. Okay, it's simple, fine. Um, intuitive for both reps and effective for us as sales. He's a bit loud. I'll run this one again. It's simple, um, intuitive for both reps and effective. Yeah, that's all right. Let's move on. 
to the next piece. My personal kind of favourite thing about it is that it's part of the technology that we use now. Close enough. Right, next bit. The contact point. Because it's the same person, it's probably about the same. I'll just jump in further and check. Um, and, and the coaching tool is obviously a way of, of recording a lot of the, the career and, and obviously developmental feedback as well. So you can communicate. Yeah, it's kind of close. I might just turn him up slightly. Then it goes to another person so here. You can communicate with them um, in terms of preparing and... Can OK, get... that's good enough. Right, next bit. You're always struggling with the same issues, so it's, it's a good way for communication. Just turn her down slightly. You can give each other advice on how to, to work out certain situations. One disadvantage of bringing in an audio which has been consolidated like this is that you can't trim it. So, for example, it sounds like this might be slightly cropped at the very end. For communication. You know, like that. And ideally, I would have that as a separate piece of audio which I can trim out and put a little fade on it, but we can't in this case. But nevertheless, it'll still be all right for the purpose of this fairly simple post-mix. You can give each other advice on how to, to work out certain situations. Mm, quite close. Now we're putting all the development cards on, on the same platform. We're like co-creating the best possible development cards. Again, he's tailing off a little bit here, so I'm just going to put a couple of breakpoints in just to turn him up towards the end. Creating the best possible development cards. We can definitely learn from each other. OK, this bit's clearly louder. I can send the invite and the rep gets the notification to say when. Um, the rep would uh, let me know where's best. That's close enough. Like I said, it doesn't have to be absolutely pinned to minus 24.0. It's just got to be pretty close. Of course, your line manager um, can provide you with feedback, but you can also get feedback from colleagues. So um, you get actually a broad overview of your... Uh, OK, that's all right. Now, I think there's a massive gap here. So let's just take all this out and then jump to the next section. This is where there would be presumably cutaways in the video. It's more about the engagement with it and see the actually the, the different learning materials that we can now pull from. Bit quiet, I'll just turn it up a little bit and then move to the next bit. It potentially isn't just um, some PowerPoint slides. There's there's podcasts, there's some YouTube videos. Yeah, that's all right. And so you directly... Uh, it's not necessary to take these gaps out. Sometimes you might want to do it just visually or if you really wanted to, you could name the clips, but there's probably no point in this case. And so you directly um, find a link to the learning and you go to Juice to um, actually uh, to find the information and you can click through to other... OK, this one looks a little bit lower. I mean, the coaching tool is brilliant because um, it basically is a way of kind of monitoring where you're at. OK. I would say it, it gives you an overview of your, your track record. OK, that's loud. And we've got that peak. So the peak is above the level of everything else. It's probably not too much of a problem, but if it does go over zero, then it's going to clip. So I'll, I'll pull it down. I would say it, it gives you an overview of your, your track record. So, of course, you have goals and you have targets to, um, to commit to. Um, and then okay. you'll need some improvement on. I think it's... That's good enough. I think it's transformational because uh, we're really clear that the big opportunity for our people development is with the managers out with their teams coaching day after day. And you can't realistically ask people to spend that much time in trade when they've got millions of admin jobs to do at home. So it's not just um, you know the quality of the conversation and being able to capture it and the visibility. That does get a little quieter later on, but you know not too much of a problem. That's it. And now if I want to trim the end, I could park the cursor there and press the letter S on the keyboard, which will trim from the cursor to the end of the file. OK, that's the basic levelling of the dialogue done. Now let's apply some compression to it and get it a little bit more controlled. So on the inserts on the track. In fact, if these are not shown, so if these were not visible, for example, you can show them by clicking over here, click on that, and here's a list of stuff you can show in the edit window. So I'm gonna show inserts A to E. These can also be shown in the mix window. So if I press Command and Plus at the top of the keyboard, let's just move this loudness meter, you can see that we can show the inserts. There are up to 10 inserts which you can show. If you wanna hide them, hold down the Option key, click on the column header and it'll hide it like that. So insert B, go to the dynamic section. I've got more compressors than I could possibly ever need. Um, let's stick with the stock one, which is dynamics three. And for dialogue, maybe I want it to be, I don't know, just somewhere around that level, 2.5, 2.6 to one. It depends on how dynamic the dialogue is to begin with. This one wasn't too bad. And then we'll just set the threshold accordingly. So I'll play it. 
We know that increasing coaching occasions drives better performance, but there's much more that we can do to understand what specifically is. Maybe I'll introduce a little bit of a knee. So this kind of gradually eases into the compression rather than just suddenly hitting the full ratio. It's about the coaching occasion that is unlocking that performance improvement. And then we can hone the coaching skills of the, the managers and the people that are out coaching. And because obviously now we've reduced the gain, that's going to result in a lower level in the short term loudness in this meter. So we can compensate that by increasing the output gain on the uh, plugin. Let's just see what that's doing. The thing that the app does is you can stand with someone in a call, capture the conversation that you have. Too loud. Pull it down a little bit. I mean, there and then agree the next focus areas for your next coaching day. Set that appointment up and put it in both of your calendars. It's close. I'm just going to play another section. My personal kind of favourite thing about it is that it's part of the technology that we use now. We're in the 21st. OK, pretty good. Now, the music, this is going to be too loud, I can tell. And also, I might as well just take out these little sections. So select it, press delete. If I want to do it an alternative way, if I've clicked here and I want to delete everything before the cursor, then it's the letter A. OK, and remember, once again, if you want to delete the end of it, click press S and it's gone. So now we've got a little bit of a cleaner start point. Now to clip gain all of these down, I can select them. So select one of them, shift click with the grabber tool, shift click again with the grabber tool, hover with the smart tool, that combo tool, over just above any single uh, line and then trim it down. So I'm gonna guess I'll pull it down by 6 dB to begin with because this music is obviously quite high level. Now let's see where the music's sitting just straight off. a little bit loud so let's pull the fader level down now you could actually do this on the volume automation so i can switch to that once the cursor's clicked in the track you can either press minus at the top of the keyboard and it'll switch between waveform and volume view or you can go to the track view selector here and choose volume so i could just click here drag turn the volume down a little bit as a start point but then I can start putting in breakpoints. In fact, there's more than one way to do this, but let's just see where we're sitting at the moment. This music probably should be slightly above minus 24 when the people aren't talking, or at least at the very beginning. But not that much above it. So here we go. Play it from the top. We know that increasing. That's all right. And I'll do it the long-winded way, which is put in breakpoints. So select the grabber tool, click here, click here, drop it down. I'll just guess how much I'm going to drop it down by. I like to start the fade just before they begin talking and finish the fade after they start talking. If it completely fades down prior to them talking, then it sounds like there's a little bit of a gap. It sounds like it's missing something. So I like to kind of cross it over with the start of their dialogue. We know that increasing coaching occasions drives better performance, but there's much more that we can do to understand what specifically it is about the coaching occasion that is unlocking that performance improvement. And then we can hone the coaching skills of the, the managers and the people that are out coaching each day. OK, this is OK. And I could, of course, go through this entire thing doing this. I'm just going to mention a couple of useful little shortcuts here. So one of them is, let's say I had... Uh, I don't know, a break point here. And then I click here and I drop the, the level down. And then I want to get an extra break point here at precisely the level of that. Well, if I click on this, I can see that that's at minus 16.3. So you could, of course, drag it down and wait till you hit minus 16.3. But it's a bit of a tedious process, but there's a much quicker way, which is just to hold down Alt and Command and click. And it puts a break point here at the same level as the previous one. We put a lot of time in developing our people and uh, yeah, coaching is the, the, the biggest instrument that we have. And of course, because of the dynamics in the music, you know, this is a quiet section, so I probably want to ramp this up to a higher fader level than the other section, which was naturally a bit louder. The thing that the app does is you can... And then I'll bring, bring it down again. So this is all very well, but, you know, it doesn't quite feel like mixing when you're doing it this way. So what you could do is you could do it as real-time automation. Now, this can be done either in the mix window with a fader or in the edit window, but with a floating fader. And so the way that you access that is on the track output, click on this little tiny icon here and you'll get this little fader. And what you can do with this is automate it. 
So I could do this in real time. So if I just zoom in a little bit, I've only got a short section on this track to do. So all I need to do really is put it into the, the uh, correct automation mode. And there's several to choose from. I'm going to do this in latch mode. So what latch mode will do is it will play back automation. If I don't touch the fader, it's just going to play back what I've got. But as soon as I intervene and start making adjustments, then I've got complete control over it. And if I let go of the fader, it will stay where I left it, waiting for any subsequent adjustments. Let's give this a shot. I'll play it from here and I'll only intervene just before this. So latch mode. Here we go. In developing our people and uh, yeah, coaching is the, the, the biggest instrument that we have. The thing that the app does is you can stand with someone in a call, capture the conversation that you're having there and then, agree the next focus areas for your next coaching day, set that appointment up and put it in both of your calendars all within like five seconds standing in a call. So it's really, really efficient. We're targeting about 4,500 salespeople, so it's, it's a huge um, project targeting the, the whole commercial front line of Coca-Cola. This tool will help you to grow and to develop as fast as possible and really release the full potential. It's intuitive, it's easy to use, it's straightforward. It's simple, um, intuitive for both reps and effective for us as sales managers as well. Okay, and I decided just to ramp it up a little bit at the end. If you stop it early and you get this kind of jumping automation, there's more than one way, you, again, that you can get rid of this. I'll just select over it, press delete or backspace. Now, the rest of this video, I'm going to try and automate in one continuous real-time pass. Let's see what the duration is going to be. It's going to be four minutes 29. I think for the sake of this video, because it might be a little bit boring to watch me doing this all continuously, I'll show you the little bit where I automate up to about here, and then we'll skip ahead to where I've done the entire automation. So on this track, click here to open that little fader, switch it to latch mode. Let's just have a look at this. You can see that this audio starts when there's no dialogue. So I'm just going to guess, I'll just start with it at about minus five or minus six, and then I'll intervene and pull it down just there. One thing which is also worth mentioning is the scrolling mode for the edit window. At the moment, I've got it on no scrolling, which means if I play this and it gets to the end of the screen, then I'm gonna to have to manually scroll in order to keep it in view. But it might be easier with this type of automation to actually change it. And you do that under the options menu, edit window scrolling. Let's do it in continuous mode. So here goes. My personal kind of favourite thing about it is that it's part of the technology that we use now. We're in the 21st century uh, using iPads. Um, everything's really quick, efficient. Uh, the guys know um, what their feedback is, both verbally, but also there's a record of it. It's, it's instant to their iPad, something that they use every day. So that part is, is really, really good. The contact point. Uh, with the reps is, is brilliant for me. You, you get to know them a lot better. You get to know uh, what makes them tick as a person, what, you know, where their aspirations are in, in the business. Okay, I'm just going to stop it there. And now let's jump to the point where I've done all the automation. And as if by magic, I've completed all of the automation. One thing about the scrolling mode, which I've been working in, continuous scrolling, is if I now go back to the start of the session, if I press return, you can see we've got this large empty space. And that's because it always centers the playback point in the middle of the screen. So I might just switch this in the options menu once again to no scrolling. And I'll just mention a couple of other things. Quite often, you'll receive more than one track of dialogue. Now, in this case, it was all on one track, but I just want to show you another little thing. If I had, say, a second track of dialogue. Imagine this is called DX2. And they'd sent me, say, some of the dialogue on that track, like this. This might be the case if you've either got different people speaking or if the dialogue overlaps slightly. So a couple of points. One, if you want to copy plugins between tracks. So if I had them on separate tracks and I was happy with the overall settings on this one in terms of, you know, the high pass filter and the compression in this case, I can copy them to it by holding down the alt key, option key, drag, put it on the inserts, drag, put it on the inserts. And then in order to root these, if I wanted to then apply some overall compression to both of these tracks, in this case, I've actually got separate compressors on them, but as an alternative, I'll just show you something. I could root these both through an auxiliary track 
And the way that you could do that is with both of the tracks selected, if I just want to route selected tracks, hold down on the keyboard, Alt and Shift, that's the do to all selected command in Pro Tools, click on the output selector, which is this section here. And then what do we want to route it to? Well, we don't want to route it to an output or a bus. We want to go to a new track. And in this case for dialogue, which I'm not going to pan, I want it to be a mono auxiliary input. And I could just call this dialogue, or I have a little abbreviation, which is forward slash DX. The forward slash for me denotes a bus, which has, you know, whatever on it in this case, dialogue. If you choose create next to current track, it actually puts it after the first selected track. I want to put it after both of these. So I'll deselect that, click on create. There's my aux and it's solo safed by default, which means I can solo anything go into it like this and you'll still hear it. I'll show you what I mean. Occasions drives better performance. If it wasn't solo safe, so solo safe is when it's grayed out on the solo button. If it wasn't, so if you command click on this, now you'll see it's less convenient because I have to okay. solo this and solo this. There's much more that we can. So actually the default behavior of it being solo safe is fine. So the purpose of an aux in this case could be rather than applying compression individually to put it on there. In fact, let's just do that. Drag this without option, get rid of this one. And now we've got one compressor, so we've saved on CPU resources and both of them run through it. Better performance, but there's much more that we can do to understand what specifically is. If you want to color code tracks, so we've got them all selected, you can double click in this area here and you've got a color palette. Let's say I wanted these to be that red and maybe the music, let's just route the music as well through its own aux, although I'm not going to do anything with it just to demonstrate some of the stuff you can do. So once again, select these. In fact, I actually want to switch these out of latch mode and put it in read. Technically you could play it back without any problems in latch mode, but if you knock a fader, then you'll start writing over your existing automation. So it's preferable to switch it to read. Now with them both selected, alt shift, Option shift, whatever you want to call it, click on the output of either new track. Now these are stereo tracks, so I do want it to be stereo auxiliary input, forward slash music, or some people use MX. So let's do that and click on create. It's solo safe. Let's just double check the music's going through we it. Can do to understand. Yep. Feedback is both. So if you wanted to either apply some processing or have overall control of the music, even if it was on several tracks, the auxiliary track is good for that. And this is pretty good really for free software. Pro Tools intro, this is, you know, it allows you to actually do a mix to broadcast standards. And really, we're only just scratching the surface of what you can do. Now, I suspect, based on what I'm seeing here, that this mix is going to be a little bit over the target level. The target level being an integrated or total measured average of minus 24. Remember, we're working to the US ATSC A85 spec in this case. I don't want it to be over. There's actually a 0.5 tolerance, and this is a little bit over that. So... I could either rework the mix a little bit on, on the track level, or technically I could pull the master fader down. So let's do that in the mix window this time. Go to the mix window. I think it's probably about 0.6 over. That might not be accurate because of the way I was playing it back and running sections again and so on, but let's assume that it's about right. Pull this down to 0.6. Now, here's another point. If you can't get a fader to the exact level you want it to, you know, for example, if I wanted to get this to 0.5, you can see... I can't. So for fine control, hold down the command key, then you can actually put it exactly where you want it to be. So we'll set it to 0 0.6 minus 0 0.6. And in a minute, we'll bounce it to disk. I'm just going to reset this reading, clicking on this bit here, select the bits which I want to bounce to disk. So I've got the selector tool chosen at the moment. I could double click on this and press shift return to select back to the start of the session. You can see that's selected everything. Or alternatively, another way of doing it could be just click and drag like that. You know, there's different ways of doing it. That will be fine as long as you include the absolute tail of the last bit of audio. And if you do want to refine the end of it, hold down shift and click and drag and you can change the end point without losing the selection like that. Right. We've got the loudness meter reset. We've got everything selected. You don't have to select across every track. You just have to select across a time range. That's all that really matters with this. Now when I bounce to disk, I'm going to do that. So once again, I really love shortcuts. Option command B opens up the bounce mix window. The alternative to that would be file bounce mix. So let's just check all the attributes here. The name of it is there, basic post mix. You could give it whatever name you want, of course. Broadcast WAV, that seems fine to me. The mix source, this is very important. If you choose the main output, 
then whatever you were hearing will be what is included in the bounce. If you choose an alternative output, if you have one, it depends on the audio interface, then you're going to hear the output of that. Or if you choose a, a specific bus, then you'll hear just the output of that. So make sure you get it right. And before you send it off to anyone, of course, double check that the mix sounds the way you think it should in the finished file. Interleaved, so I want it to be a stereo file where both the left and right channels are housed within the same single stereo file. You can choose the bit depth here. I'm going to keep this at 24 bit and the sample rate I'll keep the same at 48 kilohertz. Okay, the good thing about this Yulian loudness meter is that it will show you, quicker than real time as you bounce the disc, a reading of what the total measured level is. So to do it offline, make sure that's enabled, click bounce, and you'll see the values going along here really quickly are integrated. It's pretty close. Will it be exactly minus 24? Let's take a look. Minus 24.1. Well, Good enough. If I was really pedantic, then I would probably turn this up to minus 0.5 and bounce it again. So let's have a look at this in the session folder. Here's my desktop. There's the Pro Tools session folder. All the stuff that's in there, including the actual PTX and the audio files folder. But importantly, bounced files go into there. There's our basic post mix. Let's just double check it actually has audio in it. It does. Great. Okay, mission accomplished. So that's doing a basic post mix in Pro Tools intro. Very good software. It's completely free. Download it and check it out if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.